Praise the Lord. 2022 Usher's Week. What is our title? Blessed are the meek. See, while studying this scripture, you know, while meditating on it, the Holy Spirit brought to mind that over the last three years or so, that our topic has always been on the fruit of the Spirit. You know, in 2019, the Word of God came to us. He said, be filled with the Spirit of God. So that was our topic. And then we moved to 2022 because of COVID, we couldn't have it. And in 2021, what did he say? Godliness with contentment. And to God be the glory. Today, 2022, we are having blessed are the meek. Praise the Lord. Galatians 5, quickly Galatians 5, 22 to 23. I read. He said, bless, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, loving kindness, long suffering, kindness, godliness, fruitfulness. 23. Gentleness, the word there means meekness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Praise the Lord. Meekness is a fruit of the Spirit. Meekness is the fruit of the Spirit. It is the quality that we must possess as the children of God to be led. Hallelujah. Jesus preaching in our main text, Matthew chapter 5, from verse 1. You know, he was preaching at the mount there. Yeah? He was actually telling them how the Christian, how his disciple to live. Praise the Lord. Meekness is a virtue as children of God. The word of God, you know, told us that what blessed are the meek. The word meek, meekness, originates from the Greek word, what? Peros, which means gentleness, hallelujah, kindness, no, gentleness, mindness, is and submissive, or humility, that is meekness. Meekness is not weakness. Praise the Lord. Being meek does not make you weak, but it does not also prevent the absence of passion. That you're a meek person doesn't take away passion from you. Meekness, well, meekness is humility to God and to others. Praise the Lord. Meekness is humility to God and to others. So it is an attitude of humbleness, being humble, you know, in everything, to express yourself in endurance, you know, you're being humble. Praise the Lord. The Bible described Moses as the most humble man. Pastor, thank you so much for yesterday. I was just saying that Pastor, during the minister's preaching, was actually saying part of my message. You know, the Bible talks about, in Numbers chapter 12, verse 3, the Bible talks about Moses. He said Moses was the meekest man on the face of the earth. How could God say that? He said, that's what the Bible says, Numbers 12, 23. Moses was the meekest man on the... Moses, so meekness is associated with leaders. Praise the Lord. As a leader... What is your meekness? It's associated with leadership. It's associated with kingship. Praise the Lord. Moses led the children of Israel out, well, out of Egypt because what? He has this meekness. He has passion. He was gentle in his spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. David also is one person that was meek. You know, David sinned against God, and God was punishing David. David said something. David told God, ah, it's not these people that sin. Why are you punishing them? Because he had compassion. He was meek. He was gentle. Praise the Lord. John the Baptist is another meek person. I want to tell you about meekness. See, John the Baptist was a front runner of Jesus Christ. He was the one that actually baptized Jesus Christ. We're talking about humbleness, attitude, submissive. Praise the Lord. You know, so this guy, John the Baptist, he has baptized Jesus Christ. Now, in John chapter 3, verse 30, the disciple came to him. Before we go there, he said that all men now goes to Jesus Christ. He said, all men, the disciple of John the Baptist came to him and said, Master, all men goes to him. And look at John's response. In John chapter 3, verse 30, he says what? He said that he must increase, that I must decrease. See, the importance of John's success is the importance of Jesus Christ. John the Baptist saw his own success in Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. John was the one that actually baptized Jesus Christ. So he could have as well feel like, okay, master, you just do your own thing while I do my own thing. But he said it is important that he must increase and I must decrease. Praise the Lord. Meekness is a way of greatness. Let us not be, let, let us not be full of ourselves. Hallelujah. He said, let us tell 
you know, our struggle to make ourselves relevant is unnecessary. Learn to know your own value that God has placed in you. Learn that value. John understand the value of what God has placed in him. So it was easy for him to be envious or jealousy. He couldn't, he could have engaged his disciples, say, Don't worry, let him do his own thing. But he said, No, that he must increase and I must decrease. Only when Jesus increased and we decrease, then our joy will be full. Praise the Lord. Only when Jesus increased in us and we decrease, then our joy will be full. Praise the Lord. If you, are, if you have accepted God, it doesn't matter who does not accept you. Don't measure your life by what others think about you. Don't worry about what others say. Fulfill God's calling in your life. Is it only you? Fulfill God's calling with joy, with humility, with humbleness. You know, it's an attitude. Use that attitude of John and fulfill God's purpose. Always choose to be humble. The Bible says that, what? God, what? We exalt the humble person at due time. Praise the Lord. Psalm 37, verse 11. Psalm 37, verse 11. It's Psalm 37. It says, But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the Lord, the abundance of peace. Meekness produces peace. Praise the Lord. It is a proof of true greatness. It comes from the heart. It's not just uh, what we want to form, what we want to believe. Meekness produces peace. It, says, it moves us, you know, with what God has said concerning you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are not moved by little insult. If you're a meek person, you're not moved by little insult. Rather, we offer pity unto them. That's the same thing Jesus Christ did, you know, when they were crucifying him. He had, see, meekness is a person. You have the right to affect, to harm someone negatively. But you refrain from doing that. Praise the Lord. The same thing that Jesus did. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Hallelujah. The same thing Apostle Stephen did when they were stoning him. See, he has the right to do, but he refrained from doing that. He said what? Father, forgive them. A person who is right and does something right that will affect another negatively, but refrain from doing it. So, why is that person? Hallelujah. Such a person is a meek person. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A man or a woman naturally can be meek. Naturally, in our own self, we cannot be meek. But it is through the word of God that we become meek. That's why I say be filled with the spirit of God. That we need the fruit of the spirit of God. Praise the Lord. We all have this mentality to show off that comes with our superiority. We all have the, as a man, as a woman, you're just born with this superiority. You know, that comes as every chance you get just to show off. But it's not so for the child of God as a Christian. Let's see what Jesus did. In Philippians chapter 2, from verse 6 to 8. Philippians 2, 6 to 8. says, Jesus, being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant. What did he do? Look at what he said. He said, he humbled himself and became obedient unto God. Jesus has the power to refrain from dying, but he chose to fulfill destiny and redeem us. That's why we are all seated here. Are you a humble person? Just ask yourself, you know, you have the right. Do you always feel the need to show off your accomplishment as a person or your possession to your members as a leader and to your friends? We need to pray. Hallelujah. We need to pray for the spirit of humility. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 2, 29. Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. The Bible says, Take my yoke upon you and lean on, of me, for I am meek and lonely in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. We see that Jesus' yoke, what? Is the one of meekness. You cannot claim to be a Christian and you're not a meek person. If someone I use this If someone or your spouse offend you, and because of that you decide to not to relate with the person, or you withdraw some benefits from such a person, check your salvation. Are you meek? If someone obeys you, say, "Okay, I don't, I, I just don't want." Okay, are you a meek person? You decide. 
you are in the opportunity, you are in the place to help someone. And because the person has offended you and you withdraw that benefit, are you meek? Are you a child of God? Praise the Lord. So hard as it may be in this our generation about meekness, we must prove ourselves. And I employ every of us as a child of God to choose meekness. It is a lifetime we must take. And that's why Jesus was teaching his disciples about meekness on that mount. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Meekness has some benefit. Meekness has some benefit. One of the benefits of meekness that we can see from our text today in Matthew chapter 5, verse 5, it says, The meek people are the one who will inherit the earth. They are the one to inherit the earth. Praise the Lord. Psalm 22, verse 26. It says, The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise, they shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Psalm 22, verse 26, not verse 6. Psalm 22, verse 6. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord. They shall seek him. Your heart shall live forever. Praise the Lord. That is the first thing that we can see there about the meek person. Number two of the meek person that you can see from a meek person is that God fight for the meek person. Because he says, vengeance is mine. You can look at a meek person and you say he's acting foolishly. He's not taking the battle for you. But the Lord has said the battle is mine. So look at what David, see, look at what Moses did. You know, Moses was their leader. But Aaron and Miriam, they said what? They spoke against Moses. And Moses didn't say anything about the wife. And they even said, ah, it's the only you that God will speak to. Praise the Lord. It's the only you that God will speak to. But look at what God did. He brought them out in Numbers chapter 13. He said he brought them out. And what did God God rebuked them and what? And made lepros. Numbers chapter 12, 1 to 13. And what? And caused Miriam. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. So no matter how you know, it's important how you treat those people, your leaders. You, you might have a leader and then it's just being meek and you just take it for granted. But then... Treat your leaders right. But as a leader also, you saw what happened to Moses. Moses was the one that brought them to the promised land. But he couldn't enter into the promised land. Why? Just because of anger. So if you're a meek person, and because the way people are treating you, you say you want to stop being meek. Remember, blessed are the meek. You might lose that blessing. Praise the Lord. Number three of a meek person. He said the meek shall receive divine guidance from God. Psalm 25, verse 9. He says, he guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. The meek people are teachable. Do you understand that some people are unteachable? Just the same way some people are unlovable. The meek person, they are teachable. James chapter 1, verse 21. James chapter 1, verse 21. He says, therefore lay apart all fitness and the superfluity of wickedness and receive the meekness the engrafted word of God, which is able to save your soul. Hallelujah. Right now, the word of God is coming to you. How are you receiving the word of God? Are you receiving it with meekness? Are you receiving the word of God with meekness? You know, to receive the word of God with meekness means that you're not hesitant. You're not hostile to the spirit of God. What God is telling you, look, my brother, my sister, you need to walk in this area. Are you being hesitant with the word of God? Are you being receptive of the word? Hallelujah. Do you know that some people are unteachable because they don't have meekness? Don't re- the word of God says don't resist him. As it comes to you, you know, he says be filled with the spirit of God. Day by day, we get filled. And as you get filled, what happens? You become more and more of what Jesus talks about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number four, meekness is a wisdom. Meekness is wisdom. James chapter 3, verse 13. James chapter 3, verse 13. He said, Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good life, let him show his works in meekness of understanding. Praise the Lord. True wisdom or true wise people are meek people. Why? True wise people that are meek people, they have compassion. They are gentle. You know, the life, they say the race is not to the swift, not the battle to the strong. 
You know, it's not in half fast. So, your, our, our, our motive to make ourselves relevant in this life doesn't actually matter when you understand God's calling and purpose concerning your own life. You don't need to struggle with any other person. Why do the meek person? Let's see verse 17 in that James chapter 3. What verse 17 says? Meekness is wisdom. It says, but the wisdom from above is first what? Pure. Then peaceable. Then gentle. Open to reason. Hallelujah. Open to reason. Hallelujah. Above all that, it says, full of mercy and good food, without any other hypocrisy, anything. That's the wisdom of God. He says it's pure. It's peaceable. That's the wisdom of God that comes to us. Hallelujah. Notice the reason of these ones. Why they are what? True wisdom comes from them. They are pure. They are peaceable. They don't think of themselves highly. No. They don't think of themselves highly. That look, I'm better than this. I'm better than that. Thank God. We have come to a level, you know, now. We are not in competition with anybody. You're in competition with your own self. So you look at your life. Where are you last year and what you become next year? So are you better, rough, than you were last year than today? Praise the Lord. That is what you should be measuring your life to, not with any other person. That's why meekness is wisdom. Finally, meekness begins with God and ends with God. Meekness has so much to do with trusting God and waiting patiently for God, and we will see the reward that the meekness, meek people shall inherit the earth, which implies that those who forego worldly power will be rewarded in the kingdom of God. And that was why Jesus was teaching his disciples before he left. He said to be meek. So whenever you see a person that is meek, we give God the glory and then know that the aim of Jesus' sermon is accomplished in the person's life. Hallelujah. So right now, where you are, just bite down your head. Just the word that you have heard, just think about it. The fruit of the Spirit. He said, are you a meek person? Do you think of yourself highly? Do you have wisdom? Are you teachable? He said, the meek are teachable. Are you teachable? Do you receive the engrafted word of God? As it comes to you, are you resisting? So while all hell bound, and you need to rededicate your life right now, whether you're watching us online or here, I'd like you to just raise up your hand while we pray. Because you cannot have this... This fool, the spirit of God without being born again. After you receive Jesus Christ, then he say he breathed on them and they were all filled with the spirit of God. The meek people. Do you want to be blessed this morning? He say, blessed are the meek. Is there anyone there that wants to give his life to God? If there is no one, would you just rise up church? Would you just rise up church? Let us just begin to pray. We'll just pray one prayer. I say, Holy Spirit, fill my heart with meekness. Let us begin to declare that Holy Spirit will fill our heart with meekness. That our Lord of God will not think of ourselves highly. He said, the meek shall inherit the earth. He said, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Let us begin to thank God. Thank you, O God. He said, I release myself, O God. I release myself unto you. Father, Lord, take all your glory. Thank you, ancient of days. Father, we worship you in Jesus' name. Precious Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor for your word that have come expressly. Father, it's not of our own, O God. Father, we're praying for the Spirit, O God. The Spirit of God to fool us like never before in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, ancient of day, for in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Why, O help? Let's just take this song, verse 1 and 2, in Christ alone. Choir, can you help us? Verse 1 and 5.
Thank you.